need some coffee. <laughs> yeah, I need some coffee, Mildred. Easy on the creamer. I like to put the cream in first, and then yeah. I put coffee in because I like to mix it up. I just, it's like a natural well, mixing I, I, of it. Hey, I made a mistake one time of telling a girl I was going out with years ago uh, while I was putting hot sauce on. I said, well, it kills the taste of the food. And she goes, well, thanks a lot. And I was like, well, I didn't mean it like that. It enhances the taste of the food. I mean, it enhances your delicious food. Yes, it does. All right. We love it so much. We do. Got a great one today. Uh, Brendan Martin, our executive producer down in the horse capital of the world, Kentucky. is just a fact. Where do you buy your horses? Probably Marion County. And we by got- the way, uh, to all those people who in the storms at University of Kentucky yesterday, I saw some, some nasties. Kid get yeah. knocked over in the wind. Well, and they showed it on Fox and Friends this morning about 12 times. They kept rewind, rewind, rewind. The same thing. That's the media. Uh, but 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 that was a, a big. Hey, it was so windy driving over the bridge last night across the Mississippi River. I felt like it was going to blow us, blow the truck off the road. And, it, and I've seen 18 wheelers up here. Where it gets so windy, just thrown, flipped over right in front of you. It's, it's like, wear your seatbelt. All right. Got Dave Tompkins, Low Country, South Carolina, uh, one of our savant. Man, this is going to be a lot of fun talking Final Four. Uh, Dudley Dawson, hogville.net, and mm-hmm. Vince Ferrara, the sports animal in Knoxville. Smash the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner and Smash. allow notifications on your Android device or your iPhone. And if okay. And if you're watching on Facebook, go ahead and give us a like. You'll get notifications as well. And. Every time you hold up two fingers, you get these fun reactions on your computer there. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, also, okay, also uh, make sure that you go to our website, sidelines.live. That's where all of our great sponsors like Rumble Boxing and ECS House Industries and the great folks that support this show, Gateway Tire and Service Center, Hewlett & Dunn Boot and Clothing Company, The Vitamin Shop, Tom Martin's Body Shop, uh, our friends like Gaddis Home Innovations, Clay's Smoked Tuna. By the way, I went there yesterday. The Smoked Salmon comes out next week. So a lot, lot going on. Let's get cranked up. Get pen and paper handy. And we're going to inform you about how the Final Four might shake out this weekend. Sidelines with Rob Brown. Talk sporty to me. All right, Dave Tompkins is with us right now in the office there. You in uh, Buford this morning? Yes, sir. Reporting okay. live from Buford. Uh, I too need some coffee with creamer. Yeah, yes. Mildred, we need three Mildred! cups of coffee. Mildred! Mildred! Powell. I want cream in that coffee, Mildred. <laughs> Powell, we had that. Hey, Dave, Brendan and I, were. Uh, I'm trying to find it, but the Yukon fight song. How cool. Look, Rodney Orr asked me yesterday on the show, it was Rodney and, and, and Yancey Porter, Rodney, you know, Tyler Insider, about how do I feel as an Auburn man, Alabama making the Final Four, and I just said, hey, look, I love my school, and I absolutely love it. Uh, I'm happy for my friends because I've got a lot of Alabama friends, and I, I know when Auburn went to the Final Four, they were, like, very supportive and pulling for me. You can't base a fan base on some lunatic you see calling in every day from the nervous hospital uh, on, on a TV show. That's not – I doubt any of those people. I'll just – and by the way, I got a 12-pack of them yesterday a steamer half half case of crystals uh, had to travel all over the mid south yesterday but uh those people aren't season ticket holders and investors in the university but uh you know damn right it's it's great for the state of Alabama and 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 Auburn they got nobody to blame but themselves i mean you can't blame officials can't blame anybody Alabama has earned this Nate Oates, you talk about him as a systems coach and damn uh they went after north carolina and I know you had to pull for the Tar Heels because of your wife, but 
they ran with them. The whole, that was a track meet. That that was like an awesome series of four by fours and you know eight hundred meters, which is the most grueling and painful race in all of track and field, I think. But that was powerful stuff. And Nate Oates, uh, I why would he even look? You can talk about these other jobs. If you've got the NIL money, which Bama does, you can go get you players that you need. He ain't going anywhere. He's got him to the Final Four, and now you're playing UConn, and it's a perfect setup because everybody's telling you that you can't do it. And you know what? Treat the word impossible as motivation. That's how I look at it. I I I, I, I 1,000 percent agree, and I and I was wrong about Nate Oates. Um, yeah, you know I'm long no, suffering. I, I I go back to Anthony Murray and T.R. Dunn and C.M. Newton way back in the mid 70s. T.R. T.R. Yeah. Dunn. That's what they used to say when he was the Nugget. T.R. Dunn? And yeah, yeah. Every time he scored at McNichols Arena, you hear this, T.R. T.R. Dunn. <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, and yeah. He was all huge. the years in the 70s, 80s, and 90s of, in the OOs of Alabama was so much basketball talent. Yeah. And being able to recruit in Birmingham and Memphis and get, have these great teams that could never get past the Sweet 16. Newton and with Sanderson and Hobbs. And, and it was just so frustrating. And I finally just almost gave up. And – boy, have I been proven wrong in this particular run. And I, I think you look at Nate Oates' record, he's taking the Sweet 16 every year except the, the year they won the tournament because of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, you know, they were the number one overall seed last year, lost to San Diego State. This year they make the Final Four. And, I mean, he's going to stay put, I think. I mean, why wouldn't you? There's there's so much assets. There that you have the NIL money, you have the recruiting pool, you have Alabama becoming a, a, a basketball state. You have, you know, your in-state rival is, is they've been to a final four in 2019. They were supposed to make a run this year. Um, if, when you look at the last five years, that's two final fours, one from Auburn, one from Alabama. I think the only other states that can claim that are Connecticut with UConn's two runs and North Carolina with Duke going one year and, and North Carolina going another year. So, so, I mean, Kansas can't make that claim. California no. can't make that claim. Alabama can. Kentucky cannot. I mean, that's that's some pretty lofty stuff. Yeah, it it is. And the state. I, I said a few weeks ago on the show, you were on with us. Alabama, the state is becoming a lot like Indiana was. But you know, Indiana not not anymore. You got Purdue is so dominant, and Indiana is just kind of an afterthought. It's kind of hard for us to say that growing up watching Indiana as we all did. But I think that's where we are. Kevin Skarbinski was on the show Monday, the only basketball Hall of Fame writer ever from Alabama. The pride they take in having nine schools in the state of Alabama that have been to the tournament. And this year, you had four go out there, uh, all go out west. And you know what? Samford, are they going to be the Gonzaga of the South? you got the Jesuits out in Washington. You've got the Baptist on Lakeshore Drive. And uh, I see a lot of momentum. I mean, I mean, right now, I would say that, um, you know, as a mid-major, UAB is, you know, they're they're a B-plus a, a, a mid-major, perhaps turning toward an A-minus a mid-major. Mm-hmm. And, and Samford is a A-minus mid-major trending toward an A-plus. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, and they have, you know, pound for pound, I think the best basketball coach and, you know, not named Danny Hurley in Bucky McMillan. Yeah. All right. Let's let's look at this matchup. Alabama and UConn. Danny Hurley, part of the Hurley bloodline. Didn't the dad coach at DeMatha? In, in no, uh, uh, Saint 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 Anthony's. Saint Anthony's. Yeah. Saint Anthony's. Anthony's that's right. Near, you know who Saint North. Anthony is, don't you? It, what, Audrey, come here. If you, ever lose, if you ever lose anything, you you. What's the prayer to Saint Anthony, Audrey? It's a. Uh, if you ever lose anything, you say this prayer, St. Anthony, St. Anthony, bring it to me. I mean, things will appear. It's, it's unbelievable. That's the, <laughs> that's the magic behind the Hurleys. But Dan Hurley, uh, look at UConn. Since 1998, and Kevin Skarbinski provided these stats to us, UConn has won five national championships. That is two more than Duke, two more than North Carolina, uh, three more than Kansas and four more than Kentucky in that time span. And, and five more than UCLA. <laughs> yes. And you know what's crazy is that 
Kentucky was so dominant for so long in basketball in the SEC, but they haven't responded since 2014 when Mike Slive told everybody, ramp up your basketball. We've got the SEC network, and we cannot put Salisbury steaks on the table at Gordon Ramsay's Steakhouse. Okay, <laughs> And it, they have not responded, have they? Well, I mean, let's 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 just say that the, both the men's and women's teams from UConn win, which which is entirely plausible. Possible. I mean, obviously, the you know, the men's team is a you know shoe in favorite to win, but watch out, <laughs> UConn against Alabama. Um, but that would be twelve national championships for the women and six for the men. I mean, that's that's extraordinary. I mean, that is just absolutely extraordinary what they're doing in stores, Connecticut. Well. Gino Ariana, 11 national championships. Pat Summit, eight at Tennessee. Well, you know, you think about this. Pat Summit's dominance at Tennessee was at a time when really you had Auburn with Joe Champy was really good. Georgia and Ole Miss were, you know, with Van Chancellor at Ole Miss, Andy Landers at Georgia with the women. Philip Marshall p- pointed this out yesterday in one of his columns in Auburn Undercover. And since everybody – South Carolina and LSU are here. Tennessee's way behind them. They got rid of Kelly Harper a couple of days ago. And you know what? The bottom line is some of these programs like Kentucky and men's basketball are finding out that when other schools in the conference get serious and make a commitment, they're not as dominant as they think they are. Yeah, that's, that, 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 is, that is so true. One thing I'm really curious about for Saturday, uh, Friday night and Saturday night um, UConn is in the uh, second game slot both nights, and what's going to have the the higher television rating? Will it be the men uh, Saturday night, or will it be uh, will it be Caitlin Friday night? I I got a, I got a hunch it's going to be the latter. All right, you you have been hey Brendan, Dave has been all over this. You know Caitlin Clark, what she's done chronicling her career. That women's game Monday night was twelve point five million viewers um that is more than i think some of the world series matchups last year yeah and it's i mean i i think she's a cultural phenomenon and and i and i totally buy into people like let's don't let's don't get ahead of ourselves as apples yeah. and oranges you know you can't compare mia ham to lionel messi or annika sorenstam to tiger woods just as you can't compare caitlin to i think she's a combination of steph curry and john stockton but you know, I think she's a phenomenon because in terms of just skills, I mean, she has she has as complete a package of offensive skills as anyone I've ever seen in terms of shooting, you know, long yeah. range, shooting in, in, in traffic, ball handling, passing. I think she's a better passer than she is a three point shooter. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, of course, she, she couldn't she couldn't survive in, in the men's game. But but that's not what's important. What, what's important is this how fun she is to watch. I don't like that comparison, by the way. And I think I get away from that with women's sports, maybe because I got a daughter now that's in sports and whatever, but you got to learn to appreciate the women's game a little bit differently, the finesse and the style and and the way they play. I think physically, obviously you're going to have a differentiate, a a huge, a huge difference, but like end of the day, like they play a different style of game. And I think if you took certain females and certain males or whatever, and then made one team, I think you would have a more of a, of a balanced and a powerful team. So I, I I really, that, that, that comparison doesn't ever sit with me very well. I, 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 great point, Brendan. And, and you know, golf's my main sport, and and this adage has been true for a long time. That if you're a male golfer and, and you want to get better, the, 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 go to every LPGA tour event and Absolutely. just watch. You know, watch watch the women play. Yeah. Um, you know, because you know they put the ball in the fairway. They 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 hit their second shot in the middle of the green. I mean, they're 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 playing the way. That, they're playing golf the way it, it, it should be played. Yeah. You know, they, they, they're not going to have the be able to hit the ball 340 yards like Roy McIlroy. You know, they, they the, the best players hit it, you know, 250, 260. Mm-hmm. And that's what that's what a great male amateur, you know, should aspire to do. So, absolutely. Yeah, Brendan, you're absolutely right. I mean, look, yeah. I caddied. I actually caddied professionally at one point in my life, and and uh, you know, and, and when you go out and you carry a professional bag, and I've and I've done female and male bags when I worked at Castle Pines Golf Club in um, in uh, Colorado, and yeah. and but they had the 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 uh, international golf tournament there. But you know, when you caddy for a professional, 
it's a whole different level because you're giving yardages and things to like front edge, back edge, you know, or, you know, stuff that you're not going to give to an amateur or to anybody else because they hit it in such a precise way that they're looking for that blade of grass at 162 with a 180, you know, with a 158 carry, then they're going to spin it back and all of that stuff. And the, the whole point of this is that watching two professionals that play like that from 150 in, I mean, I've never seen anybody that, you know, hit it so pure and perfect and, and, and consistently than seeing a professional female golfer. Yes. Do it. They are so dangerous from 150 in that. And that's where you score. Uh, and, 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 and it just, it's this, their swing is so, so pure and perfect. And, and I, I try to explain that that's how a lot of female sports are. They do some of the finesse things yeah. that are so much better. Well, uh, I'm, you know, thinking back 15 years ago when Annika was in her, in her prime mm-hmm. and, you know, got to see her play and to watch her on the range. First off, she would, yeah. she, she would, she would practice for literally 12 hours and she was doing, you know, a thousand push ups and a thousand sit ups a day and squats and everything. But she would, she would practice on the range for, for, for hours on end and every shot was exactly the same and her divot pattern and everything. It's like, yeah. wow, she's, she, she, you know, at that time, you know, I thought she had come as close to perfection as you can get. You know, there's no perfection in golf, but boy, she came damn close. Well, and, and watch, I've got a daughter, you know, and, and now we got two with Mallory. But when my daughter Hallie was a kid swimming, good Lord, doing the backstroke. They sw- girls versus boys when they're younger, we're trying to overpower the water and the girls cutting through it like watching a shark or a porpoise swim. They Because they know they can't just go physically dominate something against the men, you know, it's not going to happen, but they, they do it the right way. And and when Joe Champy was at Auburn, we were so lucky he would come do his coach's show at the TV station, just listening to him talk about the game, the strategy, the X's and O's, and you just can't appreciate it enough. And I like the comment by Buck Wade, very uh, impressive. More people watched the Iowa game against LSU Monday night then watched three of the NBA finals last year. And I'll say this, uh, they, they watch it because it's basketball and it's not. And, and here's another comment by Arlo Guthrie, one of our viewers, uh, Kentucky running an NBA day camp or it's daycare. I mean, it, look, <laughs> all they're doing at Kentucky is bringing them in and saying, look what we got. All right. When everybody else is going out and getting experienced players. And again, John Calipari said it after this year's loss. Kentucky now losing four of the last five times they've been to the tournament in the first round. Um, not even getting out of opening weekend. So you got to think, uh, is that model broken? Well, yes, John Calipari, you make a lot of money, but don't give people lifetime contracts. You know, even Warren Buffett, when asked, how much of your money, and he's got so much money, it's, it's, it's hard to keep up. It's over $40 billion. He was asked, what, how much money are you going to leave to your kids? Warren Buffett said, I'm going to leave them enough, but not so much that they don't want to get out of bed and go to work. you got to keep people hungry. And, you know, the, the Kentucky has – and here's another one. That their, their ship has sailed. It's because everybody in the SEC now is ramping up their commitment to basketball. And Kentucky's not going to come down into – remember they went down to uh, – Got Kenny Skywalker years ago out of Roberta, Georgia. Yep. Um, Louisville got Charles number thirty four uh, Jones. Charles Jones out of Scuba, Mississippi, which is on Highway forty five. Uh, they also got Never Nervous Purvis Ellison out of Savannah, Georgia. That ain't happening anymore. Those guys are staying in the Deep South. It's even affected the ACC. But when you get a commitment from schools like Auburn and Alabama, and and all. They're, they're, they will do – they will starve and fast to have great athletic programs. That's Alabama is now a great basketball program. Auburn is a great basketball program. Florida has long been – it, it was yeah. returned yeah. as a great basketball program. Tennessee is a great basketball program. Kentucky? Yeah. yeah. And, 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 but the SEC is so strong. I think, you know, next year they'll get – eight or nine teams in again, I think, I think they'll fare better in, in the, in, you know, in tournament, but, but, but Hey, yeah. we didn't fare too bad. We got, we got one to the final four and another to the elite eight. Yeah. And were it, were it not for 
Zach Eadie's best game of his life, uh, they Tennessee would be in the Final Four. Yeah, and and also you he was uh, he couldn't commit a foul, and nobody right. could get near him. There was there, there was a bubble around him, a shroud, you know? <laughs> a shroud, <laughs> yes. the shroud of Edie. maybe the most unlikable guy on the big stage of college sports in a long. Just- Long just that time. smug look he has on his face the entire yeah. time. It's just yeah. smug. He, he always looks angry. He's an yeah. angry man. Hey, look, the bottom line is you can, you, if the longer you live in the pa- tradition, one thing you learn about tradition is it means a lot more and you pay a lot more attention to it when you're, when you're struggling as a program, you start going back and remember, because when you're winning at a clip like Nick Saban did at Alabama in 17 years, it's it's going to be sinking in. It's it's like a great bottle of wine down in your cellar. Okay, in in the coming years, you're going to see more and more reflections. Right now, it's like Kalen DeBoer. Oh, he's going to keep it going. There'll be a learning curve, but the commitment is there at Alabama. And you mentioned Florida. They get Todd Golden in his second year, and they go out in a 102 to 100 loss to the Buffaloes. But they, they, none of their starting five even started their careers at Florida. So, you know, the Gator Collective, they'll go get players. That's where we are, and Kentucky's forgotten. That Kentucky's not paying attention to everything going on around them. It's not a zero-sums game. You know, they, they make facility improvements at Kentucky. Guess what? They are at Florida. They yeah. are at Ole Miss. And, and Roger, you know Ole Miss basketball is going to be better. Just to correct you, it's not the collective anymore. It's uh, it's uh, Florida Victorious. That's that's uh, it. Yeah. Florida <laughs> Victorious. The, the, the collective is done. But that's so Freddie now, Weeby. Freddie yeah, Weeby. I, 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 I got to tell a Pat Summit story if I if I could. I, I said I see Rob's comment. Yeah. So this was uh, I think it was like the 2010 Alabama Tennessee football game. It was at it was at Nalen, and I was at a really cool tailgate uh, right at Thompson Bowling, right outside. And, and Bruce Pearl was there. He was a coach of of uh, Tennessee then. <laughs> And we were kind of he was he was being real friendly and you know gregarious and and we were kind of teasing about like, who's the real coach here. He goes, well, let me tell you who the real coach is here. And he goes, uh, so her her big rival, one of her big rivals was uh, Vivian Stringer, the coach at, at Rutgers, and they went up there to play at Rutgers and they lost. And so the team, the, the women's basketball team, they they get to the tarmac and the plane's there, but there's also two buses and Pat boarded the coaches on the, on the plane. They flew home. The girls took the bus home all night from, you know, East Rutherford all the way to Knoxville. And then when they got, when they got, they, they drove right up to Thompson Bowling and then there were a bunch of buckets on, on the court. And she made all the girls run suicides until every one of them threw up. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, what do you want? That, uh, that, you want that, that, that shows you how much Pat liked to lose. Yeah. 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 It, you know what? If you've got a, a, a locker room after a loss in any sport or track meet, whatever, and you don't have a bunch of pissed off, angry people after a loss, you're not going to get better. Because no. apathy among fans and among student athletes is the end of it. It's, it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't happening. And, and you know what? You, you got to think about, and, and here's Buck Wade, the old, the old Louisiana Tech uh, games, with, you know, Pat Summit. Tennessee against Louisiana Tech. Was that uh oh yeah, was it uh what was the coach that down there? I I'm, I'm K. forgetting Yow. the name now. K, 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 it was K. Yao, I think was the coach at yeah. Louisiana Tech, if I'm not mistaken. And man, Louisiana Tech had a had a superpower. But you look at it in anything, the longer, you know, it, here it is, the second coach now to follow, uh Holly Warlick and then Kelly Harper, Pat Summit. You're now about to go on to your third coach. That's the problem. I mean, everybody is being as great as Pat Summit was, eight national championships. Everyone's being compared to her. While Dawn Staley, a UVA graduate, is at South Carolina. She's got a 36 and 0 team. Okay. Yeah. You've got Kim Mulkey at, at LSU. And you've got coaches in this league and schools that have money to make a commitment. And that's – look at Arkansas. And Dudley Dawson's going to be on with us in just a moment. Hogville.net. Looking forward – because people are asking, what's Eric Musselman going to do? I mean, you know, it's moments like this that remind me of why you got to go get a good workout at Rumble Boxing Gym 
Dot-com in Midtown Memphis, 1835 Union Avenue. They're open Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. till 7 p.m., Saturdays and Sundays, 9 till noon. Check them out, rumbleboxinggym.com. 45-minute workout with 48 people, elite instructors. You can take out some frustration. Hey, you can put the Yukon emblem on a 250-pound punching bag, Dave. Go out there with the pugil, <laughs> pugil sticks that they do at Paris Island and just punch the hell out of it. But proud to have Rumble Boxing as a sponsor. I, I'm going to make a contrarian prediction, and I'm I'm being intentionally contrarian. The finals Monday night will not be UConn versus Purdue. There will there will be one upset in the in the final four. Yeah. Who is it? Who is it? I don't know. What's I, your I, lock? I, dude? I like that. I, 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 what I, mean? I, you know what's great. What's, uh, thanks, thanks. Dave. I, I would I would take the dogs and and I think what's the line on the UConn Alabama game? Twelve and it's something like eight and a half. Twelve and North a half. North Carolina State. Have, yeah. And yeah. hey, what a story North Carolina State is. If they if they win Saturday, that's ten elimination games in a row. I think you have to go all the way back to uh, there was that UConn run in 2011, and then and then go all the way back to Jimmy V in 1983. And, and, and the original survive in advance and all the you know, elimination games, they won the ACC tournament and then in the big dance and then beaten five slam pajama. So yeah. that is a, that is a story. The fact that they're going after Burns, their center, the NFL is interested in them now. And, yeah. and you know, <laughs> DJ. What, what position would he play? Would it be a tight end or would it be a tackle or tackle? Could, yeah. Probably a tackle. That's, that's, that's a cool story. It's yeah. This, this final four, you know, despite the, the big point spreads, it's 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 juicy. There's there's a lot of cool storylines, I believe. Yeah, and there are in, in DJ Burns and DJ Horn for North Carolina State. And again, I was, I was talking, listening to the play by play networks. I listened to the Duke and NC State broadcast on a, a pretty cool site I found on Safari. And the Duke guys were just whining about every call, and NC State guys. We're just having a ball, and their guy has announced he's retiring 10 games ago, and he said, I may have to stay on a little longer, you know. And, but <laughs> they are, paint the bell tower red. That's what they say when they get a big victory at NC State. But this is why we don't need to mess with this tournament. And, and, not, and NC State lost, I think, their last two games. They were 17 Four. and 14. Uh, they were going on a five-game well, there it is. Paint the bell tower red in Raleigh, <laughs> North Carolina, as the Tar Heel State is awash in Wolfpack red. That's what they were saying <laughs> on the radio. And I was going, God, you, because it is the Tar Heel State. That's the nickname of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And they were, they were rubbing it. They hate one another. But, again, that's like putting Auburn, Georgia, and Florida – or Auburn, Georgia, and Alabama all in 15-minute you know, radius of one another. It, it, it's like uh, problems you have all over the world. Think about where you just put people on top of each other. So, hey, Dudley Dawson's here with us right now. Dudley, now there's the Celtics background. We got Dave Tompkins on here, one of our savants, golf junkie over in Beaufort, South Carolina, football, basketball. Uh, been talking a lot about he thinks there's going to be an upset this weekend. And when asked, he goes, I don't know. I just think there's going to be one in the Final Four. But before we get to that, a lot of chatter out there. You know, what's going on at Arkansas? Let's talk, you know, basketball specifically. You know, but you don't, as you say, you don't traffic in rumors. Uh, so if you say something, it's got some street credibility to it. Well, Eric Musselman is either interviewing at USC today or not. Mm -hmm. Depending yeah. on who you ask, the uh, it's uh, it's quite interesting the diametrically opposed uh, information I'm getting from both sides. Uh, I guess yeah. the agent, the school, the coach, are all doing their uh, due diligence to put themselves in best position. But I'm telling you, because this has got out, whether he is interviewing or not, uh, it's kind of turned a lot of the fan base off. Yeah, I hate to see it because he's been such a good coach. Oh yeah, since he was here. That being said, he's always been a bit of a vagabond. He's never made uh, any, um, you know, he's never tried to hide the fact he's a Southern California guy, or that's what at least what he sees himself as. 
and we're you know he will eventually end up we just didn't know it would be right now but we're we're probably going to find out today if he gets on the plane and goes into usc then we you've got the, the situation where i don't see that how he gets back on the plane yeah and god that, that would be a tough loss if he does that and what is it that drove him to to be this way after four really you know pretty good years and then this year it's a it's a meltdown I, that's a shocker, and, and I, I get the Southern Cal connection, but their commitment to basketball is not better, and they can't do what – they've not done what Arkansas, other than the fact – if he's homesick, okay, but I wasn't allowed to get – I never got to come home from camp. I went to camp in the summer. Every Sunday afternoon, you had f- like like – Three minutes to get on the phone. Hi, I'm having a great time at summer camp. We're getting three good meals a day. We're working out. We're canoeing. We're paddling. Having a good time. Think next. I mean, you know, that's how you dealt with it. You didn't let you didn't. Parents didn't let you come home. I, uh, I no, can't believe we, he fact, would leave our camp counselor. Just so you know, there was no calling home for like the first two weeks. <laughs> well, write letters. Write letters. Write letters, and then those letters went right in the trash. You just got to call. And never like, let them call their parents at that, yeah. like too early. Well, you just so there was, there was a lot of negotiation, a lot of negotiation with my parents to allow me to go to church camp or whatever camp for a weekend. There was no such thing as a week long or a month long camp available for farm uh, farm guys. And, That's right. Uh, no I had to be back after, <laughs> you know, that was your camp. You had the weekend now. Now get back to work. So, but you know, well, you, you know what? About it, I, I don't think there's anything more than going back yeah. to to South Carolina and just liking new challenges and all that. You know, there, there are some who said that he, he didn't take the criticism here well. Uh, I mean, I, I just don't buy that. You don't run away because a few uh, uh, few people, uh, you know, get upset about one bad year. And, you know, yeah. you, you, there are some valid criticisms. He hadn't done great, 47-42 in SEC play. But, you know, goodness gracious, what, what it, uh, we're sitting here talking about the Final Four. That's the ultimate goal, and he went to two Sweet 16s, one Elite Eight in three years, and how in the world you could be upset at that? Uh, I mean, but then again, I'm, I'm not a fan. I try to sit here and be objective about things, and that sometimes makes me different, uh, having a different opinion than uh, the fan base. <laughs> but wasn't it two Elite Eights, I thought? No, no, two, two Sweet – oh, yeah, you're right. I, I'm Yeah. yeah. Yes, truly, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so, I mean, look, I, growing up in Memphis, and I'm going to throw this to you, Dave, to come, come back for a question for Dudley, but, you know, Arkansas, we, they're right here. And, you know, Eddie Sutton, Nolan Richardson, good God. They, they have so much rich tradition in basketball. So, whoever, if he does leave, I don't know if Bucky McMillan, I don't know what it's going to be. Because people are, there's a lot of, a lot of things could happen, Dave. Well, I, I think, in my opinion, in, in my opinion, is amateur compared to Dudley's, but but Arkansas is just a, a, a great, it has a great tradition. It's just a great oh, yeah. basketball program. It's got a great basketball infrastructure in terms of these, yeah. in terms of being able to re- recruit, recruit both in the Midwest and in the South and locally. Um, and a great tradition, and yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, I mean, I, to me, it would be a dream job to be the Arkansas basketball coach. Yeah, I mean, Bud Walton Arena. I don't know. Certainly, it wasn't nineteen thousand. I mean, it that thing thirty years ago was the cat's meow. It's a much rowdier crowd than Rupp Arena, Dudley. Yeah, and here, here's the here's the thing I would say is that yes, it is a fantastic job, but in these past two hirings. You know, there have been some 10 or so guys who have decided it wasn't the right thing for them. Arkansas fans are under the assumption that they can go get Chris Beard. They can go get Will Wade. They can go get, you know, John Calipari if they, if they want to. You know, that's, that's you know, the last one obviously not going to happen. But, the uh, you know, there, there's a reason that those guys who are all who are great and tremendous coaches, there's a reason that, that they all had to move on from their spots. And uh, does the, you know, the University of Arkansas administration want to go there? They got lucky when they, uh, uh, you know, fell upon uh, Coach Musselman. I mean, he came in here and, and did a great job. People 
remember the 90s, they forget the 2000 to 2010, the 2010 to 2020s. There was a, you know, a real dearth of success here. Yeah. When you talk about getting to the level you want to be at over those yeah. 20 years, when someone comes in yeah. here, gets them there. And, you know, sometimes uh, he is he is uh, quite volatile and that has, uh, you know, upset some fans. But I mean, they're throw to me, if you want him gone, you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah, that's a great, great point. I think, and we all kind of have, um, I guess, I'm, I'm selective memory is the wrong term, but but our we Arkansas won their national championship, I believe, in 1994, and then got yeah. to the finals against UCLA in '95. But that seems like it was only like five or six years ago. But I mean, it, that that was what 30 years ago. Um, it's been a long time, and um, and and I, I I assume that the fan base you know, believes that it wasn't that long ago and, and has forgotten that there, yes, there has, has been this, you know, dark ages period. And I just, you know, I would, I would encourage the athletic, you know, Nate, uh, Arkansas nation, just to just carefully select a coach. If, if in fact you need to. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, again, it's one of those things that I, 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 you know, I think I'm uniquely positioned to talk about this. I've written two books about the the history of Arkansas basketball. So I know what's happened for a long, long time. And I've been, you know, not not only was I here for, I guess it's now 43 years of it, whether it's covering it or being inside the program as a manager and graduate assistant, but also just, watching basketball uh, and coming to games, being at camps, all different things. And I think I've got a unique experience there. And I just sit here and I encourage people, although I know it stupidly that I do, I encourage people to, you know, worry, worry a little bit about what you got, not what you might have. Right. Uh, because it's, uh, there's no guarantee of success. And I mean, I, I was, you know, I think I get along with John Calabari. I think he's, he's a great guy. But man, uh, you know, Arkansas would lose their mind if he, if, if uh, Arkansas had only won one game in the tournament and since, what, 2017, 2019, somewhere around there? Yeah. yeah. Well, you're, you're right about John Calipari. I, I love, I mean, he is. I, when he would come to see Jimmy Sexton, his agent, when I worked at Regions Morgan Keegan for my ninth year when I left, and uh, you'd see him and talk to him in the hallway on the elevator. You can see why he's such a phenomenal recruiter. But you also feel that way about Eric Musselman running around campus, engaging with the students and all like that. Dudley, just offhand, if he does take the Southern Cal job and go back home to Watts, um, where Southern Cal is, uh, and, and if he does do that, okay, you know, Arkansas – I'm just curious if if you're interviewing for the job, would he talk to someone like Warren or Whit Stevens or some of the are those people involved? Because they're really good at building success. Um, and I don't know Hunter Yurichek. You, you you do Hunter Yurichek. Who are two or three names that come to mind that you'd say let's go get them? If you're just a fan over in you know. Hardy, Arkansas, right now, waiting for the eclipse and charging three thousand dollars a night at your uh, home at an Airbnb for the total eclipse of the sun or the moon or whatever it is. Here's here's a little bit of a problem. A lot of the candidates that I would have tossed out there have recently taken jobs in the last two weeks. Uh, yeah. Dustin May, you know, there's several other folks that, that, that you know that come to mind. I am in a in a in a position. Uh, that I am good friends with Darrell Walker. He was a base basketball player here when I was a manager and graduate assistant. I've remained friends and, and with him for a long time. He's had, uh, you know, obviously a great NBA career. He was on a team with Jordan that won the uh, um, that won an NBA title. Uh, he's done a really good job with the school formerly known as ULR, now known as Little Rock. Uh, I think he would be an ideal fit here. However, I don't know, after listening to this fan base these last two days, uh, if they believe he would be a, a logical candidate. I, I think he would, and I admit I'm a little biased in that because he's a friend. That He was a friend before he was a coach. Uh, yeah. But, you know, some of these names being thrown around that uh, – 
I, I just don't know, again, because I'm reticent to throw out names and reticent to throw out that this is a destination job because I've watched these last two job searches and I've seen people go, uh, Buzz Williams, other, I've seen people go, eh, you know, and you just don't know these days with the NIL transfer portal uh, in the different college situations, which coaches are going to say, okay, I got a pretty good deal here. You, you know, I got a lot of NIL money. Uh, you know, I'm working the transfer portal. I got a lot of high school kids. I can still do it that way. It's tough for me, much tougher for me than these last two searches to know who is going to be legitimately interested and why beyond the facilities, the fan base and all that, that they would make the move. It, it's just not as easy as it used to be to say, okay, I'm going to pin that guy down. But there's, I mean, there's obviously a lot of great coaches. You start, to me, you start with the 68th man tournament this year. And, you, yeah. you you know, you start, you know, going down that list. And I'm sure that Hunter Yurchek, who's a very good athletic director, yeah. he knows what he's doing. Now, I don't know about the, about the video out last week of him on him and Mus on the, on the Mus bus. Uh, you know, maybe we'll, we'll find out some more about that. Maybe that was a calculated move. But, uh it didn't seem to, to please, uh, you know, the other side of the, the aisle there. I, I just, you know, I think he probably has a short list. And, you know, these high, high political situations, which is what they are, even though they're sports. Yeah. Uh, right. You're playing, you're playing chicken. You've got a list if you're playing chicken. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Dave Tompkins, uh, just, you know, think thinking about this. I see a uh, Buck Wade. I wish Mitch Cronin, Mitt Cronin, would leave UCLA for a place like Arkansas. And, and he was at Cincinnati before he went to UCLA. What about that one? Because again, money is not going to be a problem at Arkansas. You think, but if you don't get the right person, the big money people probably aren't going to back them anyway, are they? No, I don't understand. Is why would you go to USC at this point? I mean, there's, there's not much of a basketball tradition there. I, I get Bronny James, LeBron, um, but they've always been the, you know, you know, stepchild to UCLA. They're moving to the, they're moving to the big, big 10, you know, let the football team be the sacrificial lamb in, in this move and, and, and how, how it plays out. You, you know, don't, I mean, I, USC is a, a, a potentially a good place to go in two or three years, but I don't, I don't think right now. So that's, that's been the big question on my mind. Yeah, and Bronny has announced. Bronny has announced he's uh, going to get in the transfer portal, so he's not even going to be there. So you're not going to have LeBron showing up and being able to recruit and all those things. Uh, you just, you just wonder. And I'd love to talk to him, but have have not been able to reach him. Uh, just what you know? What is the mindset here? Are you just wanting to get back home? His mother does live in California. Now that's one thing, and, and obviously his yeah. father's, you know, passed. Uh, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, to get on anybody for if they want to go back home. I never left home. I always stayed here had the opportunity to go other places, but I get it. <clears throat> but it's just, yeah. uh, I can't wait to hear, uh, everything that's involved in, in the story, the, the 30 on 30 story behind the scenes after this is over with. Yeah. And I do give, I do give, uh, uh, coach Musselman credit. There are a lot of people who can run out there and, and, Done interviews and start talking and, and you know fire this up a little bit more. He's he's been nothing nothing but recruiting. You got a you got a commitment from a six ten kid last Friday and here we go with this. Let's let's see how that plays out. Yeah. Hey, let's bring in Vince Ferrara, sports animal up in Knoxville, covers the Tennessee Volunteers up on Rocky Top. And uh, Vince, we're talking about with Dudley Dawson uh, at Hogville.net and Dave Tompkins over in the Low Country of South Carolina. He's part of our savant. Fridays, uh, and a Birmingham native, Alabama fan from birth, West Point graduate, and a Stanford MBA. So it's fun to kind of mesh all this in here together. But uh, Vince, we hopefully we'll get you back here. Um, but this this is a I, I'm with Dave. Southern Cal, it ain't what it used to be. I mean, Southern Cal, it's a private school. We don't know what they pay coaches and all, but. I, I, I would I, – I, I mean, his mother's there, and I, I totally understand that part of it. But uh, I, I would – If it was, UCLA, if it was UCLA, I don't think anybody would have any any questions, you know, because of the proud tradition of that uh, 
uh, school and, and program and all that. It's just USC is not the the place. Yeah, they willingly. I mean, they willingly let Enfield go to SMU. They didn't fight to keep him. Yeah, right. yeah, they don't. Vince Ferrara, uh, man, I tell you what, Zach Eady. Uh, there, there's going to be people uh, talking about that guy for a long time. Listening and watching the Tennessee Purdue game this past Sunday, he did. He had a halo around him. It was untouchable, but he had a, a ton of points. Dalton Connect had, I think, is the second most points. Dale Ellis would have to be the only guy. Wasn't Dale Ellis out of Griffin, Georgia? Uh, former Tennessee player is the all-time single point, 802 in the season. And I think Dalton Connect ended up with 780, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Alan but Houston. Tennessee's yeah, got a, a pretty damn good program. Allen Houston, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, Allen Houston. Yeah, for a single season. But Dalton Connect set the uh, Tennessee points scored in an NCAA tournament game with 37 topping Ernie Grunfeld who had 36. Yeah. So. And he's having some, yeah. Thir- you there? Okay. So he had 37 points. Okay. Well, the, and Vince, jump in when you can, because I know you're having some, some tech issues, but 37 points in a game. What was, yeah, sorry. Uh, still I'm struggling with the internet. I don't know yeah. why I'm in the same okay. spot. Yeah. But let's let's talk about you know the way that game yeah sorry out. Wi-Fi I'm in the same spot I normally am so. okay mm. but with Tennessee basketball you know we're talking about the programs and and Dave talked about it and Dudley Tennessee's got a it's, a it's a great basketball program we're talking about what's going on in Auburn and Alabama and Arkansas their situation Florida uh, Tennessee basketball and now you look at Kentucky you know. They haven't responded to everybody else in the SEC ramping up their commitment to basketball. That's how I see it. Would you agree? Because nobody beats Kentucky more in basketball in America than the Tennessee Volunteers. Dave, are you there? Or Vince? Oh. Yeah, go ahead, jump in, Dave. <laughs> it sounded like shades of John Ward there, and then back in the days of the Ernie and Bernie show, and and. Yeah. Uh, they had a third guy, I think, by the name of Mike Jackson, who was also uh, very good back then. Um, well, yeah, and and I mean, and I, I wish Vince could. He's having problems, but Dave, along that line, you you think about it, Santiago Vescovi. He he had the flu in those games, and and that hurt him. Uh, and they and and when when Dalton Connect goes off for thirty five to forty points, Tennessee usually doesn't win. I, I thought that was just a very, very exciting game. And I, I agree with you on the on the uh, shroud around Zach Eady. And, you know, uh, if, you got, if you penetrated the shroud, it's, it's an automatic foul. And he, he didn't. He had no fouls. Um, but I, 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 I'm proud of Rick Barnes for really coaching well in that game. Yeah. And I, I, I think – I do think – you know, I've changed my mind on him. I think he's going to get him in the Final Four. Yeah. Um, I think there's nothing but upside for Tennessee basketball – I hope the same will, be, you know, restore its tradition in, in women's basketball. But I think that right now the men's, I think, I think it's nothing but upside. And um, boy, I, I sure wanted to get them in the, into the Final Four this year. But but they, they, they will get there real soon, I believe. I did you know, too. I'm sitting, I'm sitting there in yeah. Pennsylvania Sunday watching that game with the, with the new grandson, uh, who by the way has more analysis than I'm sure any any young baby on uh, NCAA basketball. <laughs> They held him a lot this week with March Madness games. So, but I, I would say, you know, I went back and watched it overall, and, and I know it's an unpopular thing to say, but I think most, not all, but most of the fouls on Zach were really fouls. I mean, that's what yeah. happens when you get three or four guys down there. Somebody's going to bump him out. The fact that he didn't get foul call, he calls is – you know, leads to the credence that the referees are trying to keep stars in the, in the game and all that. But it was a wonderful game to watch if you had no rooting interest in it. Uh, you know, the uh, young Arthur, uh, the A-train Dawson, now fully understands defense, offense. Oh, uh, yeah. All <laughs> and, and, and amazingly, it hooked him to sleep. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, and, and, and give Matt Painter credit. Um, yeah, his his Achilles heel has always been athletic guard play, and they don't have the most athletic guards in college basketball by by any stretch. But but they're no. a lot more athletic now, and they can and they can hurt you. 
And yeah, they're 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 credit to Matt Painter for that. I, their, I point guard, Matt, their point guard was born in Arkansas. Uh, Raiden Smith was actually born in Arkansas. His parents played at Arkansas Tech, and uh, then they moved to Indi- Indiana, and the rest is history. So, you know, there's an Arkansas connection in the Final Four this year, even if there's no Razorbacks. Yeah, and, and, you know, Matt Painter, he looked, if, if you're not, if, maybe if you're drinking a lot, he, he looks like Gary Busey. Uh, interesting oh, guy. He does. <laughs> just, and uh, hopefully he doesn't ride around without a motorcycle helmet. Uh, but, <laughs> or, the, or what was Gary Busey's role in uh, the, the firm in, in Memphis? He was the, the, the uh, private eye, and yeah. Holly Hunter was his uh, secretary slash lover. Yes, and, and by the way, if, if Vince Ferrar, jump, jump back in here if you're in here. You did, Dave, you did remind us the other day, too. Samuel L. Jackson's uh, cameo role in Goodfellas. He was Skeets, the, uh, the driver, the driver. Of, the, of the truck. And, he, of course, like most everybody else in Goodfellas, he got whacked. He, got, he was the first one that got whacked. Yeah. And, 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 and Samuel's from uh, Chattanooga. He yeah, sure he's, is. He's a Chattanooga boy. He absolutely he's is. He's a proud, he's a proud, he's a proud, he did. He was a proud native son of Tennessee. Uh, look, Vince – you got the coolest job. Join us now and talk because we we didn't we, I want you to get. I know you had some internet problems, but that Tennessee game, it, well, Tennessee's program is so close to the Final Four, and you know no one knew about Dalton Connect last year. Who's on the radar? What, what what's going on up there? Well, Dalton Connect was the best transfer in the country, and obviously he was was amazing as a consensus All-American. And unfortunately in this game for for Tennessee, they didn't have enough offensive help around him. And that was one of the things that was a question mark about them. There was times where he didn't have to go off for them to win if everybody else was really contributing. And I think a lot of other guys contributed. They just didn't get enough offense from other guys. And the biggest part in uh, Buck on uh, on the chat mentioned it is they didn't have enough low uh, guy to throw it down to in the bl- low block and that's that has been Jonas Adu but Adu could not defend Edie couldn't keep him off the low block and he they couldn't play him because he was so mismatched they went to JP Estrella who's their number three big ahead of Jonas Adu and then Awaka their backup who's tougher and more physical not as yeah. advanced offensively he did the best job, but he couldn't stay out of foul trouble against CD. So it was a real struggle for them. And without Adu bringing the offense, that opens up so much for them. It opens things up even more for Connect, for all their other players on offense when they can score inside and outside. Another thing they didn't do is they didn't go after ED and drive to the basket and force those calls on the officials. They were pulling up with floaters and 10-footers, and they never went to his body like you got to do for those big guys and, and force the issue. Uh, and then Tennessee also couldn't keep produce guards in front of them. And so they had numerous things that didn't go against them, but Connect was heroic. Uh, it was an unbelievable season, winning the regular season. And, look, I, getting to be in the locker room to do a bunch of interviews is always cool, but it is tough. After a, a, a loss like that with the finality of seasons and careers and missed opportunity that yeah. smacks them in the face, man, it is hard on those guys. I mean, they are human beings. They are young guys. Yeah. They're guys with friendships. And it's it's just hitting them that it is over for that group and that ride. And they expected to win, which is another reason why it hit them hard. It's tough, man, to put a microphone in front of somebody – in a locker room after they've had a devastating loss like that. Uh, so I give those guys props for, for doing it like they did. But fun team to cover. Yeah. And um, an, an unbelievable year. I agree. Dudley, jump in here in this conversation. I And that, that is always – people wonder why everybody's so quiet. Well, God bless. You got testosterone. Your, your, your juices are flowing. You're not out there screwing around. You're out there to win – and I heard Dalton connect on the on the Vol Network saying, I just appreciate the Tennessee family for accepting me for the one year I'm, I'm here. And uh, I think he'll always be able to walk down the Cumberland Strip and go get a death dog at uh, the Pilot gas station uh, on, on the house. I mean, he's, yeah. he's all, which is a fun thing to do when you're in Knoxville. But Dudley, jump in. I think you have a situation where, you know, whether, you know, whatever sport, but especially basketball, because, uh, you know, it's, it ends so abruptly. 
uh, you have to go in that locker room, uh, do the interviews. Uh, they don't want to do the interviews, but they try to do, you know, what, what they need to do and try to voice the emotions. One of the things that I've always found the hardest thing to do over this 43 year, uh, career that I've had is asking the right questions and asking it the right way to somebody yeah. whose life to them has just been destroyed. You've got to be very empathetic. You've got to understand what the person's going through. Yet at the same time, you need to know why did you take that dribble over there? Why did you take that three, you know, three point shot instead of, as uh, Vince was saying, drive into the lane and at least try to get him into foul trouble. Uh, I mean, you know, it's one of the things that you have to do that because the fans deserve to know and aren't going to get to have that opportunity to hear other than what it, what two players they bring to the, the deal. But it is it is a tough, tough thing for the athlete. It's a tough, tough thing for the media. Certainly more, I mean, I'm not trying to, to compare uh, what we go through to them, but it's just the finality of things uh, in March Madness. And especially, I mean, especially if you've had a phenomenal year and then you you just can't throw it in the ocean. And that happened to a lot of teams in this tournament. I, I really like Buck Wade's point about Burns and, and, and Edie. Um, to borrow a page out of Lute Olsen's playbook back when uh, Stanford was good in basketball, my Stanford team back in the 90s, Lute Olsen, we beat everybody in the, in the Pac-10 back then except Arizona. And Lute Olsen said, my strategy is very simple. I'm going to let Mike Montgomery's teams do what they do. With one exception, they have to do it three feet further from the basket from, from where they're comfortable doing it. I think that's the strategy you you, you apply again, you know, deploy against Edie. And Burns is strong enough. Just push him out two or three feet and make him operate from there. It just it it just it's it's very frustrating. It, 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 it you know you just get frustrated. You start rushing shots. Yeah. And if they can do that and. To Buck's point, if, if if the NC State's guards can play well, they got a they got a real legitimate chance to pull off the upset. I don't think there's anybody that's more fun and entertaining to watch in this tournament than than Burns. Uh, you know, yeah. he's just having a ball out there. He's just living his best life. You know, it's uh, the noted basketball observer, observer uh, RG three, uh, former football quarterback, <laughs> a good point the other day. That uh, he really would like to see, you know, no early foul calls. Don't give three foul calls on on Burns early on. I, I I'm with that. You know, if there's some legitimate foul calls, you got to do it. But I yeah. just love to watch him and the Duke fans who were getting on him for for being overweight. And he, and he was used to be 80 more pounds overweight. I mean, the kids <laughs> getting himself. In, 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 yeah. But he's there at yeah. the end of the line. They're, they're yelling at him. He's got he's a, he's had 30 whatever, and he's he's looking at him. He's going, "You're going home." Say whatever yeah. you want. To, you're going yeah. Home. Vince, he's, you wanted to add Charles something Barkley, about. He's but five inches taller. He's yeah. um, he's big baby before big baby became you know bad boy, screw up baby. Yeah, and, and Vince, I think his personality is a lot like I call him a taller version of Charles Barkley. And Barkley was listed at two seventy. I was in school there. He weighed about three twenty, three thirty, depending on if he'd gone home to his grandmother's house for the weekend to eat. But uh, let's talk. I want to hear more about Dalton connect because he's a special player and I think he'll have a hell of an NBA career. Yeah. And I do want to circle back to what you guys were talking about there with DJ Burns and the matchup with NC state. I'll do that. Uh, do, do want to mention with Dalton connect Rick Barnes talked about how, when connect was talking to him about going to Tennessee, that he didn't really ask about the NIL. This was a basketball decision for him to go to the wow, University of Tennessee. For him. He wanted to be coached up hard. He wanted to get better defensively, become a better all-around player. And then he knew that Rick Barnes had coached his favorite player growing up in Kevin Durant. And, yep. and then when he hit the portal, he said he had like, 500 calls and a thousand text messages, something like that. That's how how coveted he was, just based on what he did at Northern Colorado when many of the common wow. fans had never even heard of him. But how refreshing! How refreshing! Yes, you've and made so, our day. <laughs> uh, yeah, and and so it, it then he also had a connection with the uh, assistant coach Rod Clark, who comes on our show each week. Uh, Rod Clark knew about his JUCO. He had been a JUCO player. 
So that connected with, with Dalton Connect, no pun intended, that he actually knew something about him instead of instead of just coming at him with generic stuff. Well, do you know who we are and all that kind of stuff? He actually connected with him. And so yeah, that that should that should be a great example to people in the portal on how to use it. Do it for basketball reasons, not for money reasons. And and this now he's become a projected lottery pick. He yeah. SEC player of the year, all the accolades, the team got to an elite eight, all this because he made a decision based on personal development as a player, not about the NIL. Doesn't mean he didn't do any NIL. He just wasn't driven to make his decision to where to go based on the NIL. So uh, I think that's unbelievable. And think about it from Tennessee's perspective. How powerful is that for them when they're looking at players in the portal? When you show that you can get a kid to make a decision not about the NIL and it works out so beautifully for him and they developed him in all ways, defense, offense, overall, and, and he can be that in the NBA, I mean, that is something that no one else is going to be able to compare to that using that in recruiting as a prime example. Yeah, well, I saw somebody who just looking the other day to have a bad day that talked about how the in the transfer portal is just a place where players who have been fired from other situations go and find a new right. team. I think that's an overly simplistic uh, take on that. There are a lot of guys out there, such as Dalton Connect, who are at a place they've given that place you know a lot of a lot of success, and now they want to go play on the biggest stage. Nobody yeah. has given Dalton Connect you know, heat it, for going and putting himself in this position. And I'm glad it worked out for it. But there's so many things that are good about the transfer portal, but they get overshadowed by the things that, uh, you know, the dark side of it is, has been said. You know, those who are going to look for money, going to look for better situations. It didn't work here at Arkansas this year because they took some players that weren't necessarily team-oriented guys. They could score. Uh, team-oriented guys, it just didn't work out. And, and you know, with the with coach, if he had one foot out the door, that that wouldn't work. And, you know, either it is interesting to me. I watched the lead eight, you know, this weekend. That Arkansas had beaten Purdue, and Arkansas had beaten Duke. And yeah. Purdue was in an exhibition game, but it was with nineteen thousand people in in the <laughs> arena in both of their plan. But they beat both of those and then didn't have a winning record at the end of the. Year. Yeah, well, I, I think, that's great wild. point. I think yeah. Dalton Connect is a great case study for for all the kids to look at and say this this is what this is how it can work out for you. In football, Jalen Hurts, and, and not not only from going from Alabama to Oklahoma, but then going on to the Eagles and what he's done is, with his career there. I mean, it if you if you do it the right way, it's 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 your friend. Just have more of a long, you know, the mentors around the at the kids just mentor them and, and give them more of a long-term view. And Dudley, well, you mentioned yeah. that the team, I'm sorry, real quick. You mentioned yeah. that the team oriented, he wanted, he told Rick Barnes, he wanted to be coached hard. It wasn't just to get better or to the exposure. I mean, those were, were part of the equation. He said he wanted to be coached hard. Rick Barnes continued. I mean, they stayed on him like crazy, but connect didn't take it personally. He embraced it. And man, at the post-game press conference, all of those guys hugged Rick Barnes and told them that they that they loved him. And and that just shows you, man, you can get coached hard but still connect and get better. But you have to have that willingness to be coached hard and get the highest level of coaching. That's sometimes why you move up is for yeah. the level of coaching that he got at Tennessee. Well, I, only the, the, wrong, I only see one thing wrong. I only see one thing wrong with Dalton Connect. And it's the fact that he Developed so well and had such a great year. There's no, no freak with the Boston Celtics draft unless they make some trade. <laughs> yeah. He, he's a perfect Boston Celtic to me. Yeah. Well, this is the interesting thing about it. You look at businesses and, and, and the businesses that I've been in, there are some firms that pay up front and some, some firms that don't. Well, Dalton Connect, I don't know what NIL he got. I don't know if he got a lifetime supply of, of death dogs at the pilot gas station. I don't know what he got, but I'll say this. That young man 
in the Tennessee faithful, and I know a lot of Tennessee fans, I sleep with one every night. Uh, bottom line, you talk about NIL, and I know the state of Tennessee. I'm, I'm, I live in Tennessee. Dalton Connect has the respect, the love, the admiration of the Tennessee f- f- fan base. Wherever he is in Tennessee, wherever he is where there's orange and white checkered overalls, um, and you can get these badass checkered overall coverall shirts at Hewlett and Dunn made by Acres Down South. They're really cool. You hadn't seen these vents? I got to send you one of these shirts. It's a, what are you at? A large XL? What are you? Uh, keep going, but no, we, oh, come on. We'll, we'll figure that out later. <laughs> come on, stretch. But look, I got to get you one of these shirts. Hey, me, me, the me, me and Ozempic are working on some new sizes. Me and Ozempic are working on some new sizes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, but you know, Connect, he's got NIL because the tennis, when he goes out and whatever, he, he'll, he'll be in the NBA for a while. But he'll want to start a business one day when he gets out of the NBA. And the Tennessee people are always going to respect that. Dave, you know that. Look, West Point doesn't offer NIL. <laughs> if you go to West Point and you graduate from that place and or VMI or the Citadel and you graduate from there – you are connected with a group of people like no one can even imagine for the rest of your life. And Dudley, you know the power. Man, taught, try to do business in the state of Arkansas as an outsider if you don't have connections within the state of Arkansas. If you're a student athlete and you leave the state of Arkansas and it doesn't work out, you know, you're, you're just uh, – you're, you might as well be, what was that old TV show, The Invisible Man? I, that story about Dalton Connect and Vince Ferrara, mm-hmm. we've heard a lot of good ones. That's the most refreshing story, and damn, that story needs to get out there. That That's what I love about Dudley and Dave and, and you, Vince, is you're telling stories that are not being told. I hadn't heard it anywhere else. That that Dudley's right. That's refreshing. It makes our day, and it makes – Makes for the one of the best shows and, I've ever done. Those, in a while. Are, those are not the Yukon Huskies barking in the background. That's Smokey, the blue tick hound. <laughs> yeah. well, actually, that's over here. It's three dogs, and I don't know whether there was a comment <laughs> I made that they didn't like or uh, the no man showed up, but they all three of them were really into it. Uh, yeah. They got crazy there all of a sudden. So I apologize for that, but they often appear on radio shows. <laughs> hey, I, I love dogs. Vince, you know, talk this Tennessee now. You, you got to move on past it. When we were talking about Kelly Harper is out as the women's coach, and Philip Marshall wrote a great piece in Auburn Undercover. She started her career as an assistant under Joe Champy, and yeah. Philip said he's a big Pat Summit fan. I mean, who can admire eight national championships? When she was winning, it was Auburn, and you had Georgia with Andy Landers and Van Chancellor at Ole Miss. That was about it. And now you got South Carolina, you got LSU ahead of Tennessee right now. It just goes to show you how far and wide the shadow of a legend can be cast. Alabama, they're not going to fall off the, you know, off the face of the earth this year, but they may lose a couple of games, two or three games with a learning curve. Uh, but Tennessee's commitment to winning is always going to be there. And I, I just, I don't know. You, you just look at it, the loss, Rick Barnes, I'm sure they'll give him a hard time, but at, what would you rather have every now and then have a really good year or every year be in the hunt for the championship. That's what Tennessee's got. Yeah, it, it, Danny White has established that he expects te- all his teams to compete for championships. I mean, he even put it out there publicly. Here's here's what we're looking for, you know, this level of SEC success, this level of uh, national championship success. And guess what? Most of the programs in uh, on campus are doing that or trending towards it. And uh, now they're they're at the top of the at the Learfield Cup in the SEC, the Directors Cup, where they were last when he got there. Yeah, and so it, it's it's an expectation, and the fact that all these brands in women's college basketball, when the sport is as popular as it's ever been, and the the ratings are just through the roof, almost a hundred percent better year to year, and um, most watched Sweet Sixteens and Elite Eights, all that, and you put all those brands out there that are are drawing these viewers and Tennessee's logo isn't among them. That, that's, that's a problem. And use even schools that aren't at the top of the SEC now 
that were recently, like Mississippi State under Vic Schaefer. They were in there in championship games too. Oh, yeah. So, yes, Tennessee, it's trying to compete or live up to the, the expectations of Pat Summit was uh, unrealistic. But they're far enough away from it that – you can't just not go to the Final Four anymore, uh, or not get past the Sweet Sixteen. So yeah, it, the the it's there's a high level of expectations, but not that yeah. unrealistic to where they they can't have more than what they've had. So uh, I didn't know if you'd do this move this year, but I I did feel like eventually this move was going to come that they they needed to to you know go to the next level with different leadership. Well, yeah, honestly, look, we, honestly, Coach Harper has been a, was a great player. Has been a great coach. I mean, good, good to great coach. But I understand the standard that Vince was saying. Uh, in the, we recently had a talk with Mike Neighbors, who's the uh, women's basketball coach here in Arkansas. He's only been to the tournament two out of seven years. They've been to the postseason the last six years, and likes to throw out that the only three teams have done that. But it's all about getting the NCA. And yeah. had a talk with him in, 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 in a press conference, and he was talking about, I am so glad that the women's basketball game is getting the attention. But it also, then that criticism is going to come with it, responsibility, yeah. advancement, all those things are going to come with it. So I think most get that. You you, you could love that, it, that the, you know, that I was in the airport watching the LSU-Iowa uh, game on my phone yeah. <laughs> uh, Monday night. And, you know, they're, the Celtics were playing, the Cardinals were playing, but I was watching women's basketball. But if you do, yeah. you know, if you get all that attention, then you've got to have the same criticism that the men get. And I I don't blame, you know, don't want anybody to get fired, but I don't blame Tennessee at all because they were once the gold standard and they want to get back to at least being in that in the talk again. Yeah, and, and that's a good thing. Look, we've run out of time, but uh, Dudley Dawson, hogville.net, Dave Tompkins, man, be up back on Friday with us, Savant Friday. Vince Ferrar, the sports animal up in Knoxville. Great conversation. Uh, check out all of our sponsors on sidelines.live website. Do yourself a favor. Go out and help somebody out. Good words, good deeds, not just good intentions, but follow through is the most important thing in life. Vince, story of the day about Dalton Connect. This guy is NIL, what it should be. And just like Dave will tell you, and and Dudley knows this loyalty. You know, you you get what that that that's a lot better than just a hundred thousand dollars short term that's blown in one weekend. That loyalty of Dalton Connect to the Tennessee fan base will last until he breathes his last <laughs> breath and beyond. Hey, you for get both. Martin, our executive producer, great show. What, what Dudley? You had one comment. In a perfect world, you'd set a health goal and results would happen overnight. In this world, the real world, it takes time, dedication, and the right support to achieve your best self. The Vitamin Shops health enthusiasts are here to make sure you're not wasting a single moment on the wrong supplements. From the highest quality sports nutrition and superfoods to the most sought after trends, you'll find a huge variety of science-backed solutions for every goal. And the people to help guide you along the path to greatness. Unbelievably, every two minutes in our communities, a child is either bought or sold for sex. I am Ari Vicky, board member for the Nashville Anti-Human Trafficking Coalition. Join me and millions of others in our fight against human trafficking and for its victims by helping to educate the most vulnerable among us, our middle and high school students. Go to nhtcoalition.org, become a partner, and help keep our families safe. Because none of God's children are for sale.